Welcome to Explainer Insight. Today, I'm going to explain the classic Tom Cruise movie Risky Business released in the year 1983. Let's get down into it. At the start of the movie, we see Joel talking to us and narrating how every night he has this same dream where he goes to the neighbor's house instead of his own. And since no one ever answers the door, he always goes inside. In this graphic dream, he hears the shower running and goes to check, only to find a very attractive girl as she's showering. And you can imagine what goes down. But before that all happens, things take a very weird turn. And he finds himself going through a door into an exam room for college board exams. And here he's three hours late to it, meaning he's never going to make it to college. In the next scene, Joel is seen playing poker with his friends. All the while, he's bragging to his friends about this imaginary story where he gets a little action with a babysitter down the street but his friends know him too well and call his bluff, making fun of him. Later, as Joel's about to leave, he has a conversation with his buddy Miles, who's probably off to Harvard soon and is telling Joel to make his move. Joel tells him that his circumstances are entirely different from Miles. Miles gives Joel some really weird advice that for opportunities to open up, he needs to say what the and make his move. Miles tells Joel that Joel has the house to himself for a couple of days since his parents are going away and that he should again just say WTF and figure out what to do. It's the next day and we meet Joel's parents and they honestly seem like very controlling helicopter folks. His parents are about to leave for a few days for a trip, and Joel's seeing them off all the while. His father tells him to follow the rules, not to cause any trouble. You know the deal. After they leave, Joel is alone and seems to be having the time of his life. He drinks his father's whiskey, even takes the opportunity to dance around in his underwear. You've seen this bit after a whole day of jumping around, having the time of his life. The next day, Joel is taking an enterprise class with his buddy Barry, and they talk about how they haven't gotten around to working on their business project at night. As Joel is working with Barry at Joel's house, his friend Glenn arrives with a girl and says he needs to borrow a room. However, while Joel and Barry are working, Glenn's business gets too annoying, actually, to the point where Barry and Joel have to leave. Joel takes out his dad's Porsche, which his father specifically told him not to do. They drive around in the car for a while, making sure they have fun with it, and after another fun night, the next day, Joel meets Miles and tells him how he's making good progress after he used his dad's car and broke a couple of rules. But now Miles thinks that he has to take it up a notch and he has to do something more fun. He takes a number from a newspaper of a girl named Jackie who provides services at home. He calls Jackie on Joel's behalf and books an appointment for Joel and says he'll check up on him later. Later, Joel keeps himself busy by doing chores around the house and studying for his exams. When Jackie shows up, it turns out Jackie is a cross-dressing man and Joel absolutely loses it. He calls Miles, and Miles refuses to come to him. Joel ends up paying for the time Jackie spent at his house and all the effort that he had made and sees him off. But before leaving, Jackie leaves him a number for a woman named Lorna. Later that night, Joel calls Lorna under the fake name of Ralph and sets up a meeting with her at his house. God, you would think that one number would be bad enough, but here we go. We're just going to start this chain of ridiculous folks. And after some time, Lorna arrives and Joel actually gets the action that he wanted so badly. All right, so I was wrong. No big deal. In the morning, Joel finds Lorna still at his house and comes clean that his name isn't Ralph and that it's Joel. Lorna says that he owes her 300 bucks, but he says he doesn't have that kind of dough and he has 50 bucks. Instead, he tells Lorna that he does have a bond that he could cash out with and he leaves her at the house to get the bond, which is worth 500 bucks. He comes home to find Lorna gone, and he realizes that Lorna has also stolen the crystal decoration piece on the mantelpiece. Why would you not anticipate that happening? Joel meets Miles later and tells him that he really needs to get that Faberge egg back, and Miles is welcome to help him out. They make their way to a restaurant where they spot Lorna in the distance. Talking to a man, Joel decides not to do anything there and comes out with Miles. However, Lorna comes outside to and asks Joel for a favor. Joel asks what it is and she says she needs a lift. Joel says he'll only do it if he gets the egg back. Meanwhile, the man Lorna is meeting comes out furiously and demands for her to get out of Joel's car. Lorna tells Joel and Miles that the man is her manager and they need to drive her away as he's threatening her with a gun. The man. 
starts chasing after them in his car, and Joel finally loses him in a series of alleyways and takes Lorna to his house. A day later, Lorna is still at Joel's house and she's adamant about not leaving, despite the fact that he has to go to school. Joel goes outside to tell Glenn and Miles to go on to school without him, but he ends up going, leaving Glenn and Miles back at his house. He comes back and finds out Glenn had called another girl named Vicky over to his house. Joel goes inside and tells Lorna and Vicky to beat it. They offer him 50 bucks from the profit, but he refuses and asks them to leave. As they are about to leave. Lorna's manager Guido from last night shows up again and Lorna and Vicky tell Guido that they work for Joel now. And Guido just indirectly threatens Joel and leaves. Looking forward to that unfolding. But later that night, Lorna and Joel have a casual conversation and decide on going to get some ice cream alongside Barry and Vicky. While outside, Lorna suggests that she gets her friends together, use Joel's house and make a fortune till his parents get back. She even suggests that she'd be his girlfriend for the next couple of days as well. Joel takes his moment to talk to Lorna about her personal life and how she got into this business, to which she replies that she had to do it when her stepfather kept coming on to her. Joel tries getting her to open up about herself, but the situation backfires, as it seems like Joel is judging her, and she says she's trying to be friends with him, but he's making it hard to do so. Since Lorna and Joel were talking near the dock and his dad's car was parked on the dock without the brakes up. Joel's bad luck strikes again and the car starts moving and eventually ends up in Lake Michigan. Things keep getting worse for Joel, as the next day, when he gets his car taken out of the lake, he finds out that it'll cost a fortune to fix it. And it doesn't end there. When he goes to school, he gets a five-day suspension and gets kicked off his business project as well. Joel comes out of the school to tell his friends and tells Glenn he needs to borrow his bike. He cycles and travels all the way to Lorna's apartment, and when everything seems like it's falling apart, he goes and hugs her. Joel and Lorna finally partner up in order to fix the entire situation that's gone down to the gutter. They follow up on their idea of introducing each other to each other's friends and thus starting business. Lorna has all her friends come over to Joel's house, and Joel has a lot of people coming in. His customers, mostly guys from his own school. Barry begins focusing on the finances. Lorna hands all the production while Joel makes himself responsible for the marketing and the sales. He convinces guys from his school to not waste time elsewhere and make good use of his services instead. In no time, Joel's house becomes nothing less than a brothel. The house gets crowded, and everyone appreciates the efforts that Joel's making as Joel is at home, managing everything to his bad luck, Mr. Rutherford from the Board of Admissions at Princeton, shows up to take an interview that had been arranged by Joel's father. Joel does terribly in the interview and decides to go to the University of Illinois instead. In the middle of everything that's happening, Joel's father calls him at home, which obviously one of the wonderful ladies picks up for, and that sparks suspicion in Joel's dad, who asks if Joel is throwing a party because that's what he specifically told him not to do. Then Jill's mother intervenes and takes the phone from her husband and tells Joel to be careful and look after himself as they are going to be coming back in a day. Once off the phone, Lorna walks up to Joel and decides that the both of them should make love on a moving train. So they pay out all the girls close-up shop and they make their way to the train. However, there are lots of people on the train and they have to wait for the perfect moment for when there are fewer people around. As soon as the train empties, Lorna and Joel go for it. And it's a pretty passionate scene, exactly like Emil Hirsch and Alicia Cuthbert at the end of The Girl Next Door. At this point, I know for a fact that Joel feels like he's catching the vibe for Ilona. Fast forward to the next day. In just a day after running business, Joel has made enough money to pay for all the damages that had been done to his dad's car. Joel drives the car home only to find out his house has been wiped clean of everything. Joel calls Lorna, and Guido picks up, saying that she's always had a thing for trains. Guido obviously confesses that he stole all of Joel's stuff. The worst part is that there are only two hours left until Joel's parents arrive. Guido forces Joel to buy everything back from him, and his partnered up by Vicky. Joel manages to buy everything, including the crystal egg that started this mess. Joel and his friends manage to put everything back into place while Joel's parents arrive. Joel's mother notices a crack in the crystal egg. Later, while Joel is doing yard work to make up for the egg, his father comes to him and tells them that he got into Princeton as Mr. Rutherford loved the interview. So in the end, after a few bad decisions, Joel really got what he always wanted a little business. 
the audience all after a hard day's work and admission to his dream university. That was all from the video. I hope you liked it. Subscribe for more content like this and hit the like button to help us out. Also, leave a comment if you want us to explain your favorite movie. Until next time, take care.